This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Kia ora, good evening. Welcome to the South today. I'm Daryl Baser. Things are changing for New Zealand as this global pandemic continues to spread and the South today isn't immune to the issues facing the nation as we all band together to stop the spread of COVID-19. We at Allied Press thank you for your viewership and understanding at this time as New Zealand joins the rest of the world in doing everything possible to reduce the impact of the virus. At this afternoon's media announcement, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern made special mention of families who have lost people to COVID-19. She says New Zealand will move out of Level 4 lockdown at 11.59pm on April the 27th. Over the past few weeks, I've often used my time at this podium to acknowledge the people on the front line. Today I want to remember the people in New Zealand who have lost someone to COVID-19 or the many more who had the terror of almost losing someone. Throughout this pandemic, there have been individuals who I have tracked the progress of. I didn't know their names, but I knew their status. And I still get a phone call for every individual person that we lose to COVID-19 in New Zealand. We may be amongst a small number of countries where that is still able to happen where the numbers we have lost have been small. But we cannot forget that every number is someone's father, someone's mum, a relative or a friend, and someone that we have all been united in an effort to protect and to save. And that is why we as a country took on the challenge of steering down COVID-19, because we believe that decisive action going hard and going early, gave us the very best chance of stamping out the virus. And it has. We have done what very few countries have been able to do. We have stopped a wave of devastation. Our transmission rate, that is the number of cases that each person with the virus passes it on to, is now 048 less than half a person each. Overseas, the average is 2.5 people. We have amongst the lowest number of confirmed cases per 100,000 people in the world. We have a relatively low proportion of serious cases. And according to the Oxford University Coronavirus Government Response Tracker, one of the lowest mortality rates in the world. Nearly every case identified since April 1 is primarily as a result of overseas travel or contact with someone with the virus and often in existing clusters. The number of individual cases that we don't have an obvious connection in that period now stands at only eight. Our testing has scaled up and we've now tested over 85,000 New Zealanders one of the highest testing rates per capita in the world. In the last few days, we expanded testing to include random testing in Queenstown, the Waikato, Canterbury and Auckland. We've tested over a thousand people this way and so far have produced not a single positive result. The Director General of Health is confident that there is currently no widespread undetected community transmission in New Zealand. In short, the effort of our team of 5 million has broken the chain of transmission and taken a quantum leap forward in our goal to eliminate the virus. Elimination doesn't mean zero cases. It means zero tolerance for cases. It means when a case emerges, and it will, we test, we contact trace, we isolate, And we do that every single time with the ambition that when we see COVID, we eliminate it. That is how we will keep our transmission rate under one. And it is how we will keep succeeding. And we have seen success. You, all of you, have stopped the uncontrolled explosion of COVID-19 in New Zealand. And I couldn't feel prouder 
of the start that we have made together. But I also feel a huge responsibility to ensure that we do not lose any of the gains that we have made either. On that basis, New Zealand will move out of Alert Level 4 lockdown at 11.59pm on Monday, April 27, one week from today. We will then hold at Alert Level 3 for two weeks before reviewing how we are tracking again and making further decisions at Cabinet on the 11th of May. And stay tuned to Channel 39 to see today's full announcement from the Prime Minister and Ashley Bloomfield. Buses are still operating in Dunedin for essential workers, as well as providing transport to the supermarket and pharmacy. Running on weekdays to a Saturday timetable, the services are free to those who need to use them. Dunedin's buses are still running for essential workers. They can also be used by the general public for essential activities, such as going to the supermarket or a pharmacy. And to keep everyone safe, there's been a few changes on how the buses operate. Entry is now through the back door of buses, entry and egress, but also on the buses itself we've got that um, physical distancing of two metres, and of course big bus allows that to happen um, a lot easier than a smaller vehicle. The government has made the bus services free, so drivers no longer have to collect fares and are isolated from passengers. During the week, buses now run on a Saturday timetable. Surprisingly, um, we're carrying about 9 or 10% of what we normally carry. Uh, to put that in numbers, it's, it's between 7 and 800 on average a day. It sometimes gets up to as high as 1,000 in Dunedin here. During lockdown, one thing the services are not for is joyriding on the buses for fun. Buses are there for people that haven't um, got other transport choices to get to supermarkets and pharmacies. They're not there for people that just want to break from home. The government subsidised free buses are set to continue for the next three months. Really thankful for um, and bus drivers really for being out there doing, continuing to do the job. I mean they're, they're putting themselves in that contact with people and delivering that essential service. In Dunedin, the South today. 51 staff will likely be made redundant as Dunedin Railways Limited mothballs its track and equipment to avoid closing entirely. In a statement this morning, Chairman Kevin Winders said mothballing is a way of preserving the company's assets with a view to exploring future options. Seen here in file footage, 80% of the company's business came from international tourism. Continuing to run would cost the company about a quarter of a million dollars per quarter, with little hope of significant revenue in the next year and a half. The Dunedin City Council has agreed to meet the ongoing costs of mothballing the operation. It's thought the cost will be over a million dollars. A small number of staff and key assets such as locomotives, and carriages and power vans are set to be retained. In Dunedin, the South Today. Since the Prime Minister signalled changes to Level 3, many in the education sector have been concerned about safety with some pupils returning to the classroom. Anna Taylor is a teacher at Dunedin's Sarah Cohen School and says they're maintaining a safety first approach having refocused to online learning. For a bit of background, um, how long have you been teaching at uh, Sarah Cohen? I've taught at Sarah Cohen for a year, but I've been in the mainstream teaching special ed for 10 years now. How many pupils are there on um, Sarah Cohen's books uh, in Dunedin? And we currently have 48, uh, ranging in age from five years old right through to 21 years old, and with quite a wide range of learning abilities. If I recall, there are, there are at least a couple of campuses on, in Dunedin? Yes, that's right. So we have um, our base school, which is uh, the high school through to 21 year olds, and we have two satellite schools, one for the younger children and one for middle school. How have the pupils been learning uh, during, during lockdown? Oh, well, they're doing remarkably well. It's, the families are just doing a fantastic job. So all of our students have individual learning goals and programs. So we've been able to provide activities and supports um, online for, for those to continue. Um, we also have an amazing team of therapists, so they have also been able to continue their programs. So, for example, our occupational therapists and speech language therapists have been able to continue their programs through things like Zoom. So that's just really fantastic for the students to keep their learning going. 
Um, we're also uh, having lots of online contact, so whether that be individually or groups. So, for example, my class meets every day at 11 for a Zoom class meet, and uh, we all get together, the whole class, um, all the teacher aides, and we'll have a chat, share some jokes, sing some songs, that sort of thing, um, maybe share an activity that they could try during the week. Uh, it's just really nice to have that face-to-face -face contact. So, yeah, lo lots of contact and uh, putting those individual programs up online as best we can. And so what have teachers like yourself been doing during lockdown? Like, it's, the turnaround from reasonably normal to we're at level four was pretty quick. Um, how quickly did you guys manage to adapt? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it happened really quickly, actually. So I, I think we're doing really well considering, um, yeah, how quickly it happened and it was sort of quite unexpected. So um, the main thing is just trying to adapt our programs and offer that online support. So a lot of work's gone into that. We've really worked quite hard as a team to share our skills and to, uh, you know, come up with ideas. We've had the tech wizards helping out those of us that are perhaps not so technologically minded because that's been a bit of a sudden change. Um, yeah, just lots of sharing of ideas um, and adapting of programs. The other thing is um, providing pastoral care for families. I think, you know, many families in New Zealand are struggling at the moment, but um, particularly for our students, a lot of the support networks have changed. So, um, for families, maybe carers, respite care, other family members aren't available for that support. So offering pastoral care is a really important part of our job. So um, lots of phone calls and keeping in touch, so often daily with some families just to check in and be a listening ear and offer some help and yeah, so, so um, lots of adapting. And then of course we're keeping our own families going as well. So it's a bit of a balancing act. The Prime Minister's announcing today um, what's going to happen. Um, what will change given the different results of that? Uh, well, my understanding is that if we move to level three, uh, special schools will stay closed at this stage. So for us, that would just be keeping the online learning going and, um, and that's just improving as we're all you know, getting better at it and the students are getting more used to it. So it, initially, it will just be carrying on until we're... Um, down to I think level two before we would start again. Um, so but yeah, basically where to from here? What's the uh, next step for you? Um, so you do a regular 11 o'clock uh, chat, but you know, so what's next for you guys today? Uh, well, the learning will just continue online, which um, is, as it has been. Um, when we go back, Sarah Cohen is um, at, the, at the end of the year, we're being completely rebuilt. So that's something really exciting to look forward to. So, um, yeah, we're, the school has been completely rebuilt. We will have um, a state-of-the-art school, state-of-the-art playground, hydrotherapy pool. So, yeah, lots to look forward to for us. So um, when we do get to go back, we'll just um, settle back in and go back to normal. I think we'll all adapt really well. Brilliant. Natana, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for that. Time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MolMap. Beginning with the situation, a week of westerly airflow lies ahead with fronts from the Tasman Sea washing over southern districts from time to time, bringing rain to the west and on the south coast. In the southern towns, the Catlins and Balclutha have moderate northeasterlies, cloud increasing, while Lumsden and Gore are due for freshening northwesterlies and late rain. All four centres are heading for 14 degree highs. Heading across to the central lakes, Wanaka and Alexandra are heading for light northwesterlies, showers and 16 degrees. Queenstown is similar but 1 degree cooler on 15, while Tiano can expect fresh northwesterlies, rain and 14 degrees. In the northern towns, Timaru and Wamaru are due for moderate northeasterlies, fine and 15 degrees, while inland Twizel and Omarama are both in line for light northwesterlies, clear skies and 17 degrees. In Dunedin, it'll be fine and cold tonight with a chilly overnight low of 5 degrees. It should be dry tomorrow with a few sunny periods and cloudy skies from time to time. Expect a high of 14 and a low of 10. It'll be cloudy and rather cold on Wednesday with light northeasterly winds, a high of 12 and a low of 8 degrees. And heading down to Invercargill, the showers clearing tonight with southwesterlies dying out and a nippy overnight low of 4 degrees. Sunny periods at first tomorrow, but high cloud increases with rain developing later in the afternoon. A high of 14 and a low of 9 degrees. 
It'll be mostly cloudy and cool on Wednesday, with moderate westerly winds. Expect a high of 13 and a low of 10. And that's all from the South Today team for this Monday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. And stay tuned to Channel 39 for the latest COVID-19 updates from the government. Stay calm during the pandemic, and as the Prime Minister says, be kind. Ka kite popo. See you tomorrow. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.